Hello there! This new series will take on a topic that I feel could use more attention in the fandom. I will be discussing the various occupations that Jedi could have taken on during their active years in the Republic. I feel this series will be particularly useful for those seeking inspiration for a character in a fanfiction, an MMORPG, or even a tabletop RPG. Like my previous series on Jedi Temple Guards, I'm looking towards the Force and Destiny RPG books for inspiration. Along with this, I'll be looking at the non-canon book, The Jedi Path, a manual for students of the Force. In the Force and Destiny books, there are numerous careers that a character could take that fall under Guardian, Warrior, Consular, Mystic, Sentinel, and Seeker. While these careers are intended for characters who are merely Force adepts following in the footsteps of the Jedi Order post Order 66 or those who have a connection to the Force in some manner, I feel this gives us a glimpse into occupations the Jedi could have taken up. I will be consolidating the careers to better fit the three Jedi schools of thought. The Guardian and Warrior careers will be combined to form the Jedi Guardian school of thought. The Consular and Mystic careers will be combined to form the Jedi Consular school of thought. And the Jedi Sentinel and Seeker careers will be combined to form the Jedi Sentinel school of thought. Each of these groupings are merely two sides of the same coin in my opinion, so each school of thought will receive its own playlist so one can better navigate occupations of a specific school. Like with any other content within the Force and Destiny books, we must take them with a grain of salt as they mix canon and non-canon materials, but it should be a fun and interesting topic to look into regardless. Let's get started by reviewing the three Jedi schools of thought. When you think of a Jedi Knight, what comes to mind? Perhaps a brave warrior that jumps into battle to defend the weak? Or perhaps an adventurous soul who leads their troops on the front lines in a war? These will fall under the specialty of the Jedi Guardians, the first Jedi school of thought we'll be going over. Jedi who prefer direct solutions to a problem or are gifted with martial art talents will more likely than not find themselves part of the Jedi Guardian branch within the Jedi Order. These brave defenders of the Republic will often work with planetary authorities to stop crime, combat threats to the Republic such as the Separatist Alliance, or defend researchers and explorers from unknown foes while out in wild space. In Jedi tradition, Jedi Guardians typically wield a blue lightsaber. However, they are not limited to this lightsaber color. This is merely their traditional color that represents their branch. Notable examples of prestigious Jedi Guardians are Jedi Masters Obi-Wan Kenobi, Plo Koon, Mace Windu, Kirok Infala, Sindralig, Saisi Tin, Kit Fisto, and Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. Whether they prefer negotiations and defense, or aggressive negotiations and offense, both seek to get the tough jobs done. We'll be going over the following Jedi Guardian occupations in the future installments of the series. Jedi Peacekeeper, Temple Security, Jedi Ace, Lightsaber Instructor, Exotic Weapon Specialist, Aggressor, Protector, Armorer, Warrior, and Warden. Those within the Jedi Consular branch embody Jedi philosophy as a whole. They are more often than not serene, meditative, and more concerned with research and metaphysical matters rather than physical ones. Though this does not mean that the Consulars abstain from the physical world, quite the contrary. Many Jedi Consulars would end up as doctors, diplomats, researchers, or even explorers. They use their minds and spirits to make the galaxy a better place. While not always the best lightsaber combatants, they make up for it with their knowledge of the Force and they're able to tap into the Force more than their peers. Because of this, Jedi with rare Force talents such as Force Healing, Divination, or perhaps those with a strong affinity for telekinetics are more likely to end up being taught how to own their abilities within the Jedi Consular branch. In Jedi tradition, the Jedi Consulars wield green lightsabers, Notable examples of Jedi Consulars are Jedi Masters Yoda, Qui-Gon Jinn, Satil Shan, Yarrael Poof, Depa Pilaba, Luminara Unduli, and Jocasta Nu. Jedi Consular occupations we'll be going over in a series are Sage, Seer, Healer, Researcher, Ambassador, Advisor, Diplomat, Lore Keeper, Prophet, Nemon Disciple, Ascetic, and Teacher. Then we have the Jedi Sentinels. 
The Jedi Sentinels take the middle stance when it comes to knowledge of the Force and lightsaber prowess. They are also the branch to primarily take up skills not common within the Jedi Order, such as tech slicing, espionage and stealth tactics, demolitions, and medicine. Jedi Sentinels tend to live more isolated lives, staying within a planetary district or on a remote planet for months to years at a time. This need to be self-sufficient is what requires them to learn various skill sets. Sentinels and Guardians would often work hand in hand. Say for example, there's been an upsurge in violent crimes on a planet. The Jedi Guardians will be the ones to fight the thugs and cease their hostilities, while the Sentinels pick up the mess, put the pieces together, and try to learn more about the situation through their investigations. The traditional lightsaber color of the Jedi Sentinels is yellow. Though these blades are rarely seen, as Sentinels typically only draw their blades when it is absolutely necessary, instead resorting to solve problems before they even become problems that would require physical force. Notable examples of Jedi Sentinels would be Jaden Kor, Quinlan Vos, Cal Katarn, Bastila Shan, and while not directly stated, I believe Jedi Master Tiras Nube would fall under the category of Sentinel. Jedi Sentinel occupations we'll be going over are Artisan, Slicer, Tech Expert, Security Expert, Jedi Shadow, Jedi Recruiter, Atari Striker, Pathfinder, Investigator, Racer, Sentry, Watchman, and Navigator. Then we have to consider those who did not pass their initiate trials and ended up working for the Jedi Service Corps. They too will receive their own entry. If you have read the Force and Destiny books, you might have noticed I left out some classes, such as the Steel Hand Adept, Executioner, Magus, and Alchemist. I left these out as I felt these do not seem like professions that Jedi would take on. That or something like Steel Hand Adept can be melded with the Warden. These missing occupations will receive their own unique entries in the future. There is no one Jedi that is best at everything. Rather, each person who can hear the Call of the Force has their own unique gifts and talents. Setting limitations for these characters is what makes them interesting in my opinion, and how they struggle with their limitations and how they work around them makes for good stories. Perhaps this series will help you to develop your own stories and ideas, or perhaps give you some insight on how the Jedi operated throughout the galaxy. Regardless, I can only hope this series aids you in some manner. This will conclude the introduction to the Jedi Occupations. Goodbye, and may the Force be with you.